and on the wheels uh, still give it up for my man Milton how do you how do you pronounce your last name Milton Frizzato Milton Frizzato on the wheels of steels my producer tonight looking forward uh to this show but I'm an optimist in life but this show is going to be about Massachusetts becoming the hot spot for the battle against the coronavirus in all of the country. And it's time to talk about that. It's time to talk about what's going on in Georgia. It's time to talk about the CDC director uh, talking about uh, an a even more deadly version of this coming back in the winter. And you know, without a national policy on this, you got states doing essentially whatever they want to do. And it's, it's, it's just, it could be a recipe for disaster, is, is what I am saying. And I have always, I had always, not that I thought this was, it was hype and hysteria, but I thought it was being reported that way. I thought it was polarizing politicians in that way. I thought it was... Uh, a lot about that, okay? Uh, do I think the death tolls are going to get to, you know, the hundred th- hundred thousands? I, I don't think, I don't believe so. But right now, I do know that it is a critical time because a lot of people have sacrificed staying home. I'm, I'm talking to friends of mine, tell you that they're not letting their kids interact with their friends, I mean, like an organized bike ride uh, here and there and some, some drive-bys, but that's it. Schools are closed. UMass Dartmouth Fieldhouse has been commandeered by the hospitals here per order of the governor of Massachusetts to set up a hospital unit for, for people who have the virus but uh, don't yet need to be on, what's the name of the... Uh, not ventilators, uh, the, the equipment keys. Ventilators. Ventilators, yeah. Uh, vent- uh, ventilators. Uh, you know, we, we, so there's a lot to talk about. I got the news of that. Can you, you slide down in that chair, man? The other chair. Other chair. Also, I, I, I just bring your chair down there. All right, but yeah, it threw me for it threw me for a little loop. There. I'm used to seeing you. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to seeing you down the same left thing. field line. Same thing. Yeah, same, I'm, I'm used to seeing you. I'm seeing you, I need to see you down the left. I'm used to seeing you down the left field line, and it threw me there for a second. But uh, like like we talked about, it has all come to a head. And strangely enough, Massachusetts is is this place where. Uh, 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 you know, it, it's all come about. And I think that we've done a good job of this. I think we have the best hospitals. I, I don't know why. Why has Massachusetts become the hotspot for this? Because what does your research okay. tell you? The good news, more tests are yep. being able to, to be conducted in Massachusetts. Yep. The bad news, yep. as more tests are conducted, the cases of people testing sure. positive, uh, sure. I mean, they're really going up. I just happen to have my notes from the last time I was on here five days ago, and there were 30,000 cases in Massachusetts in the last five days, now we're up to 41,000. So that's like 10,000 cases in five days, which it was. was so, we're, so we're at the surge right now. Yes. yes. Where New York was last week. Yes. And we've been told to watch this for a, a long yeah. time, that the, the 10th to the 20th were the days to watch, but it wasn't a finite okay on the 21st. It's back. To, so we're at, you know, we're at we call crunch time right now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, it's got to be because I had a conversation uh, with a few sources of mine and talked about what is happening at UMass Dartmouth, where they are essentially holding people who have the virus but uh, aren't yet ready for the 
Ventilators. Ventilators uh, uh, that uh, have been, you know, so much talked about uh, in this process. So uh, apparently that's what the numbers are saying. Maybe to have supervision over the more because essentially you weren't getting get, going to a hospital unless you have trouble breathing. Yes. And they're sending you back home and then God knows what happens. You're affecting more people. So I guess this is the governor the country, the resources, focusing in on a specific city and, and, and state and looking to shut it down and, and, and get it over that hump. Yes, and I mean, we're the third in the country behind New York and California, so it's not... A, Boston, yeah. it seems to be seeing where sure. is the city where sure. you're getting the most cases. It's where people live on top of each other. No shit, there's no pro- problem in Wyoming or North Dakota or Colorado or, or, or South Dakota or... Uh, Alaska or, or Iowa or, or you know uh, we, we we know you know yeah, there's, a state, you know, there's a states where there's more pieces of, of course than there are of people. course of course they're called flyover states and, and and I'm not dismissing them but you know people don't tend unless unless one or two cities are not living on the top of one another it's a very big country I've driven it twice cross country. And we're never going to run out of land. <laughs> no, we won't. You know, that, that's, not going to, that's not going to happen, sure. But at UMass Dartmouth, okay, it's been taken over by the hospitals, okay? They are, the shifts are 12 hours apiece, and you're on call for the second 12 hours, I've been told. Okay? This is high-risk, you know, front-line type of responsibility, Asked of people, okay? Asked of people who, you know, were doing you know, ordinary medicine and ordinary jobs and ordinary, you know, uh, stuff not too long ago in the industry. Yeah, I mean, years ago when I worked in manufacturing during busy season, we'd have six days a week, 12 hour days. And they cut it back because they said, hey, 12 hour days, people are tired, they tend to make mistakes. Now on people, you're know, saying 12 hour days with people in the medical field. Yeah. <laughs> how, are not how, an option. how productive is it? It can't be, they're doing it out of necessity and need. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to tell you something right now. All right. And you, and you take this down right now. Okay. You got children out there, you know, nurses and scientists and doctors and chemists and medical workers. Okay. They need to be heroes. You know the story of Rosie the Riveter? The story of Rosie the Riveter was a propaganda piece, piece by the United States. No, can you get the, my, uh, my girl Rosie up there, okay? Oh, this yeah, is fantastic. Man. This is the United States at its best. This sign, okay, represent, represented and motivated ordinary American citizens during our darkest hour in World War II, okay, when everything was on the line. Everything, our freedom, our lives, everything was on the line. World War II, okay? Japanese in one, uh, in one direction, Germans in the next, okay? Rosie the Riveter, this propaganda piece, okay, was meant to inspire and honor and recognize, okay, the American female, who went from housewife to hero, okay, making uh, stuff for the government and for the army and the navy that, and the citizenry that it desperately needed. It was a massive workforce that had been essentially shut out before. And the American woman stood up and says, I can do this. We got your back. I can handle it. My man is getting his ass shot off in Okinawa or his ass shot off at the, at the, uh, at the, uh, at, at the, uh, 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 fighting the Germans in Normandy. Okay. But this, this was different. This was something that the world did not expect was the American worker. And the new worker brought in the American housewife to do amazing, amazing jobs on the assembly line and work their ass off for this country and donate their money to, to buy, uh, buy U.S. bonds. 
And you remember the cartoon when we were yeah. kids, have you got any junk, which I happened to pull up the yeah. other day. And like basically whatever you had, metals, yeah. scrap, yeah. just turn it over, which was was turned yeah. down and they turned yeah. it over and used for bolt, you know, to make bolts sure. and yeah. a weaponry. Yeah. And that's what got us through. <laughs> but, the, but, but this woman that I talked to today who's going to have to work 12 hours, okay? You know, she's got limited experience with this. You know, she's nervous. You know, she's worried. You know? You know, uh, you know, minimum case, you know, she might not be able to see her family for two weeks while working 12 hour days in a mask. Talked about how difficult it is to work. Okay? How difficult, is, how difficult it is to work with the mask on and in that full gear all day. Yeah. My wife, she wears one, and um, whenever we go, and she yeah. wears glasses on top of it, and it's like, and that's like one of the things that says, hey, you know, my glasses fog up, yeah. but it's a sacrifice she's willing to make yeah. to prevent making somebody sure. else. But she's at risk. Yes. And yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Uh, this, this, this woman is working on the front lines uh, with this stuff. And UMass Dartmouth, okay? How many UMass Dartmouth out there watching right now? How many people been there, you know, uh, stepping up to the plate? You know, nobody wants this in their backyard. Nobody wants to put people through it. But you know something? <laughs> you know something? There ain't time for that no more. All these nimby motherfuckers not in my backyard. You got to go. You know what I mean? It's all hands on deck. It's all hands on deck. Okay? Uh, to shut this thing down. Schools are closed. For the year in Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, uh, and Kansas made that decision even before we did. Oh, yeah. A lot, and lot, more lot. states are going to do it. And other states, another, another, uh, many more states have done it as well, uh, too. But, uh, you know, uh, for the seniors, you have to feel bad. You know, no sports, uh, no, uh, no graduation. You know, I mean, hopefully they can pull something off. No prom. I mean... You know, no I mean, last when day. does it, when does it end? Like our, our last day of school, no last day walking through the college. There's, 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 there's a thousand, there's a thousand memories about about this, and uh, you know, I, I hope the schools get creative and spend some energy in trying to send them out the right way, because they sure have sacrificed a great deal. But you know, when you look at the family from Amaral's Market, okay, and you look at the New York Police Department that is lost, I think like. 87 um, NYPD offices that have uh, lost their life to this. I mean, it, it's, it's insane. You, you know, uh, I had a friend today that told me, okay, that drops off medical equipment, fixes and drops off medical equipment. It's a technician that you see the body bags coming out of Mass General in a hospital in Boston. That's what he does for a living. He drops off fixed equipment uh, that, that his company fixes and, and sells and he does it and he says you see it because you see how tired the nurses are you see the body bags you see the bags under their eyes and people walking around exhausted the tractor trailer trucks that are the, free, the freezes because they can't do anything with so they, the families can't even give their people they're losing a burial yeah Twenty nine, twenty nine police officers in New York City. Twenty nine. Excuse me, I, I, I must have uh, missed. I think, uh, yeah, twenty nine of them have passed away. Just think about that number. That is, that's an insane, uh, insane number there for sure. Uh, so Massachusetts takes its role as the epicenter. Lots of attention to it today, but I have faith. I have, I have a tremendous amount of faith in the Massachusetts health system. Okay, in our governor Baker and our elected officials at, at the state level, okay, uh, that they're going to effectuate this. Yeah. They're, not they, they're, go, they're going to give it up. They're going to effectuate it. Yeah, we're not ranked number one in education, second, yeah. high, higher and, and um, regular yeah. for nothing. Yeah. We don't have, when you list the top 50 hospitals in the world, <laughs> routinely, 10 of them, Come out of Boston. That's not a. That's not yeah, No, no, I, I hear you, and, and that's and, and thank God, thank God for that, and, and, and thank God for that. What about? I'm going to tell you something right now. Okay, we haven't got any stimulus money yet. I haven't got a check. I haven't got a dime. Uh, we applied for the economic small business disaster. Uh, we haven't got that yet. Okay. You read about corporate America and their greed, 
and, and Harvard getting money and, and, and Ruth Chris Steakhouse and all of that, you know. But I'm going to tell you something right now. If a nurse or a doctor or somebody in the medical field, okay, or with the student loan, okay, has sacrificed their family, potentially their life, potentially their health, and worked the type of shifts and done the type of heroic type treatment right on the smack dab on the front line, okay? If any of them, any of them carry student loan debt after this, somebody at the federal level should be ashamed of themselves. I don't care if they owe 80000 I don't care if they owe 12000 I don't care if they owe what they own. There is not one person who, who has been in the trenches that should owe anybody a goddamn thing. And I this. never thought about that until just now, but you okay. know what? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they've stepped up. You don't get a call saying, hey, we got 150 people coming in right now. Yeah. <laughs> you just throw up, drop on a dime, yeah. and, they, and they've stepped up. They've done a thing, and yeah, yeah. yeah, they have. And well, when you talk to somebody like my friend who does it for a living, so knows the contrast and knows the people and sees them, he's like, Mike, man, you wouldn't even believe it. He says, you wouldn't even believe how real it is. He says, I see it every single day. He's afraid to let his kids out of the house. Yeah, I mean, what he sees it. You can sit there and look at whatever news station you watch and see the numbers put up. Those numbers don't tell half the story unless you are someone on the front line in the hospitals, yeah. driving the ambulance. Yeah, whatever. whatever. I, I, I fighting the fires. Anybody deal with public? Let me tell you something. And, and you, you want me to keep it there for real? I'm going to keep it there. All these people had a problem with the, with, with the minimum wage increase. Okay, those are the people serving you your McDonald's and your Burger King and your lottery tickets and your beer and your cigarettes and your Gatorades, okay, <coughs> and everything else. How about those people that people are like, oh, they don't deserve minimum wage. Do they deserve it now? You bet your ass they do. Yeah, and they should be getting hazard pay as well. You bet your ass they do. All these people that were shunned, that were mocked, that were mimicked, that were called unskilled and untrained and unemployable and all that. Well, you know something? While everybody else is in the bunker, they're on the front lines. So the next time you talk about minimum wage, Jack, okay, remember that girl, okay? Remember that girl that sold you your cigarettes or sold you your beer or sold you your water. <coughs> or, 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 or waiting on you and your family to get the to get the gallon of milk or the bag of chips or when you guys needed something, okay? Because they're out there. And let's go even one further: the immigrants <coughs> who everybody wants to hate, who has their issues with. Well, they're the ones harvesting what what you got for food. There's a shortage of workers. There's, there's a shortage of workers. Uh, workers out there. Uh, I got my notes here next, the divided states of America, okay? And as hot as these people are working on the front lines, in it, it must be a tremendous smack in the face when they see people walking up and down the beach in Florida and, and, and Georgia getting ready to open up businesses and beaches and, and, and everything. I mean, that is, <coughs> that is crazy. I mean, he opens it, oh, stuff starts opening up later on the week and then Monday... I mean, the Republican governor, does he want to endear himself to Trump? I, I, is, is Trump sending this out as, as a test balloon? Uh, or is he defying it? I mean, who knows what's going on? But tell me a little bit about the Georgia governor, Keith, and tell me a little about what, 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 some of the stuff that he's trying to do. No, yeah, I mean, he's going for a short opening and have the beaches and then, like, you know, and the nail salon yeah. and the barbershop and stuff like that. I mean, he was elected last time, two years ago, I believe, and um, that was a controversial election. He was the Secretary of State. Yeah. And he, like, in, in the urban areas, yeah. he, what, whatever the word I'm looking for, he shrunk the polling places in places yeah. like Atlanta and in Macon. Yeah, sure. To vote, 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 voter suppression. Yeah. It, it was a highly could, could, could race. But what, what is his motivation for doing this? Is, is, is he the test balloon? I hear that. Because there are people in this country, okay? There are there are people in this country, okay, uh, uh, who are pissed off and don't want their government government telling them what to do, and uh, are in places where <coughs> uh, 
are more spacious and <coughs> more land per capita than New York City and Boston and cities that uh, you know, have a mistrust of governments who, who aren't going to be told what to do. And, and when they see this uh, as these mandatory quarantine, they, they see this as, as, as the government chipping away and taking away more and more rights. And you got this madness going on in Michigan where, where protesters are holding up traffic during a medical emergency and storming the front things in the st- state house. And listen, they got the right to. They, uh, they, uh, you know, sadly, you know, they, they, that's why they didn't get locked up. That's why, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's crazy, you know, but I, you know, our right, you know, uh, our, our right to protest, our right, right of free speech, you know, it gets tested a lot. And like I said, with common sense and, yeah. and, and practical matters, you know, but you can't be halfway pregnant. Yeah, you, you know, your, first, your first, your first, your your freedom of speech yep. ends once it endangers others. Yeah, you, you can't yell fire in a fire crowded in a crowded theater. theater yeah, I don't have the right to play drums at three in the morning in a, if it disrupts the sleeping pattern yeah. of everyone. But it's the same thing. I mean, this is a this is an invisible, undetectable enemy we're fighting. It is a nameless, faceless enemy. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like I feel like float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Can the corona, you know, catch Muhammad Ali? It's like, where's it coming from, man? I mean, you know, and he's like, George, you know, talking about it's some whacked out shit. Yeah, and these states that are basically pushing the envelope here. It's yeah. like, hey, this got to the United States from China and Europe and has killed how many people? I mean, do you not think? That yes. it can't make its way down to Georgia or to South Carolina yeah. or to Michigan let, from New York. Let me guess. No, let me guess. Nobody died in China today, right? Yeah, <laughs> How many people in China? Look that up. Nobody died in China today. Nobody died of the coronavirus in China today. That's funny. Uh, 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 1.4 billion. Uh, nobody died from the corona today. Yep. And... I, and no I, new I, cases reported either. Talk to me about this CDC director who made me, my legs, listen to me. We've been working out. We've been living right. My legs buckled when I read this fucking breaking news over CNN saying the CDC director said, Corona's going to come back stronger in the winter. Are you kidding me? Can, can, can you imagine, like, 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 Podcast City, Harry New Media, and, and, and an American nurse and the American small businessman going for round two or, or the rematch of this thing. And that was brought up. You know, That's not a fight I want to fight, man. Oh, no. And that was brought up early on in this before, when, before the, we had our first death report in the U.S. They were talking about if we don't start doing something, it's going to come back. You know, it, and you said, yeah, the numbers yeah. will flatten at some yeah. point, but it come back and come back again in the fall when the weather gets cold and yeah. it's just... Uh, yeah, and, 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 and what does CDC stand for? Center for, of Disease Control. Center of Disease Control. He's the director, right? Robert it's, Redfield. Rob, Robert what? Redfield. Now, let me ask you a question, Keith. How high-ranking is he? Does he supersede Fauci no, in this matter? He is a... Um, the CDC falls under the umbrella of the Department of Health and Human Services. Okay. So awesome he's, stuff. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. So where is he? Why are they, why are they making a, a big deal about him saying this? I mean, where is he on the food train? I mean, that... that I mean, that, I that, 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 that's, that's a serious title, right? What, what does that mean again? Center for Disease Control. Center for Disease Control. And, and the director for disease control in this country is on record, on TV, telling us we might be ready for round two. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't know anymore, man. I don't know anymore. I'm going to tell, tell you something. We are turning into the, the divided states of America. I'm telling you that right now. That is a smack in the face to, the, uh, to, to, to every state who's trying to do the right thing. Yeah, and, These it, states reopen and it doesn't help. And I'm Mr. Reopen. But we can't do it now. Yeah. We, we, might be able, listen, we might be able to do this in a, in a month. Like, we might be able to do this in, in, like, in phases. You know what I mean? Yes, and that's the way in you phases. Do it. But not now. Phase one, it makes a lot of sense. But we're not ready for phase one yet. 
You know what I mean? May 14th, that was another day, you know. Okay. But as a group, go and we and we do it. So the test will be the same. So the rhythm and the rhyme of everything will work. Yeah, and it doesn't help when you have you know the I mean? president of the United States picking and choosing what states to to encourage to defy the, the and but how do you know that he's discouraged to defy that, Keith? We want to keep this post, show. Because he's I, I, posted on Twitter, liberate Michigan, right. liberate that Virginia. That was terrible, yeah. terrible, terrible, terrible. But do you think that he's he's got something behind uh, what's going on in, uh, in, in in Georgia and some of the places that are talking about reopening? You think those are test balloons for his re-election campaign? Because like he said, he goes, it's all about November 3rd. So, do you think that he is prodding them? I mean, those states, he's probably going to win anyway. I mean, but yeah. then again, that's how we get national well, policies. Well, Georgia's, Georgia's, getting, Georgia's getting a little funky. But that's how we get national change. You see, you see what, you yeah. oh, this became the rule in this state, and that state, and yeah. that state. And Yeah. Uh, so, is he behind it? Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to tell. I mean, he's not. I don't think there's a, a Republican government has in, a, in, this, in this country has the balls to not do what Donald Trump wants to do. Oh, the, I don't think there's a what. Go ahead. The governor of Ohio is still keeping. At, yeah. And who's a Republican? Sure, sure, sure. Charlie and, and, Baker. And I don't think Trump has it. I, I don't think Trump. What I'm saying is this. If he told Trump to shut it down, if Trump told him to shut it down in air and caution and wait a little bit, that governor from, that governor from Georgia is going to do that. I would and, think so, and, and yeah. If Trump gives him a mandate, he's going to do it. And I think he no, might so, even be- but, so the, but there is no mandate for, for Ohio. Nope. You know I mean? and, and, but, but I think, you know, if Trump, like he said, the power of, of, the, of the front office is, is very powerful. If Trump told this this. Republican, gov- controversial governor from Georgia. Hey, listen, we're, we are a little too early, a little too early to the party. I appreciate it. You know, when I'm re- when I'm ready, I'll let you know, and, and we'll let you go. You know what I mean? I, I I I don't think any Republican governor is doing things that Trump doesn't want done. Charlie Baker. <laughs> there you go. But is he really a Republican? He is, but I mean. Is he really? I mean, I mean, I mean. He's you not know. a Trump. He's not a Trump version of a Republican, but he is cut from the same cloth as, say, Ronald Reagan and George Bush. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's far more liberal and he's far more social, pro- socially progressive than he is. No way. Uh, he's a well Republican. He is a. Uh, he's, he's, he's maybe a Romney Republican. You know, he's a, he is a guy that is uh, 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 progressive in thought, but still. You know, conservative, fiscal conservative, for, social liberal, social social liberal for that party. But I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, he's never going to be to be to be embraced by the NRA. He's not going to be embraced by the by the evangelicals. He's not going to be embraced by the Bible thumpers. He's not going to be he's not going to be embraced there. I mean, his embrace will be because of how left he is of the Republican Party. Although that's being what a Republican. Gets him elected in this state, yes. Well, I mean, yeah. Is the fact that yeah. he chose. If a Republican get elected in this state, he get elected president. Okay? And he, might, he may run someday. Uh, I, I think we're starting to see politicians separate. Like, let me take something out. You don't think the, the Democratic National Committee doesn't want Chris Como? On the front of that ticket right yeah. now. Well, they would, I mean, where is Joe, where is Joe Biden? Somebody has him hostage. No, on the same token. Somebody has Joe Biden hostage somewhere. I hope they're pumping him with vitamins. I hope they're making him read. I hope his workout, his mind is sharp. Whatever. I think he's afraid to come out. But don't think, I know you do your watch up, but listen to me. But don't forget what, what your boy told you right here in the hurricane. What, what he told you. Let Trump beat Trump. Less may be more. Let Trump take all the oxygen out of the room. Let him ha- keep having press conferences because the polls are starting to show it. Starting to show it. Conservative in, polls. And so in the states we'll that see. matter. <laughs> we'll see. You know what I mean? He's still going to be. He's still going to be very difficult to beat. Absolutely. He has an amazing command and control over his base. He's a master motivator. Okay, he's a huge draw. He's hugely popular. Uh, you know, this anti us against the world. We're getting robbed by China, getting robbed by this, robbed by that, demonizing illegals. 
keep our money, spend our money on Americans in America. You know, it, it works for some, but it's just not that simple. No, it isn't. Uh, you know, uh, certainly. Uh, speaking of Trump, and he must have got pissed off for something because the hydrochloroquine yes. has been tested and it's killed. It, it, it is high, uh, no benefit whatsoever and higher death rates to those administered. When he first started pushing that, I mean, there was old, people yeah. were ODing from self-medicating in, in well, countries in Africa. Yeah. They had someone in, and that's how desperate people are, someone in Arizona who, who died yeah. because he read that it was in fish cleaner. I mean, you got to really be desperate. Feds charged the doctor, right, who cited the president in support of this uh, 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 during this hydrochloroquine nonsense. And that guy, I think he's like... So he must have pissed me, he, 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 uh, you know. And that doctor, I think he was like a, a chiropractor. So he, wasn't even, <laughs> oh, he wasn't even like boy. someone who actually practiced medicine. No, yeah, a voodoo doctor. Man. Uh, but on the positive side of go some ahead. of this yeah, stuff, yeah, go, go. You know, there's been a home te- lab call that's named a company. They're out of North Car- they're on North yeah. Carolina based. Yeah. Um, they've been approved by the FDA for home coronavirus yeah. testing. And uh, across the pond yeah. at Oxford University on yeah. on Thursday, they go in and finally. Yeah, tell me about t- 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 tell me about that, Keith. Tell me about what's going on at Oxford. You you were talking to me when we were prepping for the show, and I didn't have enough time to talk to you about. I was listening to you talk to somebody else about it, and it sounds like there's great stuff going on there. Yes, they have um they have a vaccine or what they think is a vaccine. It's ready to go for human testing yeah. on Thursday. Yeah. So before you test it on humans, before you at least know it's safe, you got to test it. You know, you have your guinea pigs and all of that. Um. That's ready to go on Thursday, and yeah. most of the time when they test something and they and they put yeah. it out there like this, it's that's probably yeah. I, I don't, I'm not. A, I don't want to start. Well, Oxford could be the very, very best university in the world, yeah. and it certainly surpassed Harvard in like you know research and, and, and being on the front edge of this. And, and I'll tell you what, up. this should motivate our universities to to, to really get into the medical thing, yeah. man. You know, to, to to get in the medical thing, and like I said, kids need. You know, you know, forget this nonsense about being a rapper. Forget this nonsense about being an NBA basketball player. Forget this nonsense about, hey, you know, about, you know, uh, uh, being filthy rich and yachts and, and all that nonsense. You know, my, my sciences, chemistry, health services, you know, I, I mean, these are people that are doing it. These are the people that are doing it right now. And if this yeah, stuff, yeah. and if this stuff gets a positive, gets a positive result, they say they expect by September to be able to put, start putting forth a million tests. If we can land on Mars, go to Mars, whatever we do. If we can, uh, you know, uh, hear a frog rivet in the middle of the Amazon, okay. You can do on your phone yeah. with what you used to, what we used to see on the Jetsons yeah. when we were kids. You know, I mean, there's more technological capacity in a cell phone that we're the first person on the moon. But instead of having robots walk, uh, uh, flying around stop and shop, make sure you have enough toilet paper and hand sanitizer to keep people clean. You know, then maybe worry about the food that you don't have to, you know. You know, stockpiles of stuff and being ready and and and, and make, making sure we don't make the same mistakes and we don't get caught shorthanded ever again ever again you know we can do that with five less bombing planes with with with, with, with a little with, with, with some of the the, the the budget for the pentagon okay right there for a medical crisis we spend, uh, if you eliminated the Pentagon's budget by like 70%, sure. we still spend more than the next 15. It's like, yeah. we, yeah. how, much, I mean, how, how many need? missiles do we need to blow the world up? You know what I'm saying? The arms race is over. Uh, uh, you know, we, we need more of the pie, of, of the resource pie to be dedicated to medical and, and making sure that we're ready for this stuff again, because I don't think it's going to be the last time 
Uh, we are out of time. I am the Hurricane. Thank you very much for listening. Got my man Keith over here. We're just getting started at Podcast City. We are a working studio. Okay, come check us out. If you ever get the blues, we're always here for you. Hit us up on Facebook. Got my, uh, my cell phone number posted on there as well, too. Hang in there day by day, brick by brick. Peace. Good job. The best.